right, well, we are going to talk about incorporating research and using citations. And um, hopefully this webinar will not only give you tools for how to use MLA accurately and consistently, but it'll also give you kind of a broader view of how to take source material, your articles, your books, and so on, and use them smoothly in your writing. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is beginning by choosing well. So incorporating research starts with the kind of sources that you're using. So you may find your professors asking you to use scholarly articles or peer reviewed articles or academic articles. And for many of your papers, they're going to want those kind of sources. And very often students aren't sure what that means. So what I've done here is I have attached a link to the anatomy of a scholarly article. Can everyone see that? Just nod if you can see that. Yes. Yes. yes, I can see that. Wonderful. Um, I'll let you, you know, you'll get the link to this presentation. So you'll be able okay. to look at this in greater detail. Okay. But this anatomy uh, allows you to see what a scholarly article looks like. So if you're asked to find peer reviewed or scholarly articles, you're going to want to find sources that look like this. So there's a title, usually followed by one or more authors with credentials given. So it'll show the institution that they are associated with as well as their degrees. Scholarly articles usually start with an abstract, which is a short summary of the contents of the article. If you're doing a lot of research and you're trying to figure out what articles to use, I recommend that students just read the abstract without trying to read the whole article. That will give you a sense of what the article is about and will let you know whether you want to use it or not. That abstract is usually followed by an introduction that provides context for the article. If you have a little bit more time, I find the introduction really helpful to read as well. Then there's a lot of information about the studies, the research that the writers are doing. Um, there might be a discussion about the results of that study. And then finally, a conclusion. If you're short on time, read the abstract, read the introduction, and then read the conclusion. The conclusion summarizes the results of the study or whatever research is described in the article and will also give some practical applications or questions for future research. Another great thing about scholarly articles is there are always references. There's a list of um, articles, books, other studies that the authors have cited. That is often a great place to look if, if you're trying to find other articles, other sources on the subject. So definitely check out the reference list. So now you know if you're required to find peer reviewed or scholarly or academic articles, you're gonna to wanna to find articles that look just like this. They have an abstract, they've got an introduction, they've got a, a description of the study, conclusion and reference list. Any questions about that? No. no. All right, good. We'll keep going. So we've talked about making sure that you choose your articles well. The next step is making sure that you're reading those articles or those sources, books, whatever, critically. So what does that mean? It means that you're not just reading quickly and trying to remember what you read, but it means engaging with the text, asking questions, and recording responses. So there are a couple ways you can do this. You can highlight what's important, but I recommend if you're working with two or three articles that you color code your articles. So everything that has to do with a particular article, you highlight in yellow, and then you write information about that with a yellow dot or something. Everything that has to do with another article, you highlight in green, and then your notes for that are in green. Everything for the third article, you highlight in pink, and your notes for that are in pink. Now you have a color, a way to organize the information and you can remember what came from what article. Um, how do I now start putting that information together? Um, I found that when students have multiple articles, they can often get mixed up and they forget what came from what article and you know everything is kind of jumbled up. So color coding can be a really nice way to organize your sources. Um, can you go over, I'm sorry, can you go over that part sure. again? Yes. So let's say, Jackie, you have two articles you want to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, article A, if you can print it out or um, you can maybe 
copied onto a Word document. This really only works if you're able to actually make marks on the article. Mm -hmm. Article A, let's say everything that you um, highlight from Article A, you highlight in pink. Okay. And any notes that you want to take on that article, you write in pink or you write with a pink dot or something. Okay. That's article A. Then everything that you um, highlight on Article B, you do in green. Okay. All the notes you have from Article B, you do in green. Okay. Now, when you're writing your paper, if you're looking at your notes in pink, you say, oh, okay, I like these points and they come from Article A. Okay. So when I cite, I'm going to use the bibliographic information from Article A. Okay. Time I want to use something from art, you know, I see something in green I like, I know, oh, that's from article B. So when I cite, when I quote, when I reference the article, I'm going to be using article B. Okay. Now you've got your sources um, organized and that really helps when you've got like six, seven articles that you're working with. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, and that's really good if you're a visual learner and you like to kind of see things mm -hmm. in color that way, that can be a really helpful, um, helpful tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition to highlighting, I suggest taking notes. Because sometimes when we highlight, we start highlighting a lot and we can almost do it without thinking. We end up with like huge chunks that are highlighted. And then we go back and we say, okay, why did I highlight? What's important? So I recommend taking notes as you read. And right on this next slide, I have some questions that you can use to guide you. What's the writer's purpose here? Or what is his or her position? What supporting points or evidence is the writer using to support his or her position? Is this evidence convincing? Do I have any questions about some of this evidence? Does the writer present an opposing idea and then refute that, those ideas effectively? Who's the audience? Who's the writer addressing? Is it a Christian audience? Is the writer addressing teachers? Is the writer addressing pastors? And what, how can I tell, um, what relationship that writer has with the audience. Does the writer consider the audience neutral, uh, hostile, um, supportive of what the writer is saying? Does the writer demonstrate bias? Is there anywhere in this article where the writer seems to have a clear agenda or is it a pretty objective article? So these are some questions that get you to really engage with what you're reading. Um, it can be a way to write notes to keep track of what's in the article and um, those notes can come in really handy when you're writing your paper. Okay. What I wanna show you in addition to those questions is what's called the double entry journal. Has anyone worked with the double entry journal before? No. no. Okay. This is a really nice way to keep track of your critical reading process for an article. So what you do is you take a piece of paper and, or, a, or a Word document, and you divide it into two columns. Then at the top of the document or the paper, you write down the title and everything that you're going to need, author, publication date, everything you're gonna need for citing. So now you know, okay, this journal entry has to do with this article. Then as you're reading your article, on the left side, on the left column, you write down important information from the article, facts, quotes, paraphrases, ideas from the source that you think might be important. As you write those things down, note page numbers, because you may want to go back and cite what you just wrote down. So if you've got the page number right there, then you're not going to have to go through the article and find these things. So information on the article with page numbers on the left. On the right side, write down your reactions. I agree with this. I have a question about this. This is a strong point for my conclusion. This reminds me of another article I read. So left side is stuff from the article, right side would be all of your reactions and responses to the article. So now you have a critical reading of your source where you've got material from the source as well as your responses to it. So let's just look at this um, example. It's not a great example, but it was one I was able to find. On the left side, you see that the person has written what the article says and they've put quotes here. Now, if this was from a book or something with page numbers, I would also add page numbers right here. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you'd see their questions and their connections. Mm -hmm. So now when they write about this particular story or when you're writing about the source, you don't have to go back and look at the article. You can look at your double entry journal. 
You can find important information with page numbers, if applicable, as well as any connections or interpretation or um, reactions that you have. So it's a really nice record of what you've read. Any questions about the double entry journal? Um, no, I really like it though. <laughs> ah, yeah, now it takes a little longer, but I mm -hmm. think in the long term, it ends up saving you time because mm -hmm. now you have a nice organized record of your reading and you don't have to go back over that book or that article and okay, what did it say? And where did it say that? You've got it all right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You said so, the left, sorry. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Kian. Kian. You said the left side um, is the quotes What's well, actually facts? Mm -hmm. Yes, stuff that's actually in the article. So what it could the, it could uh -huh. even be your own words. Yeah. And the okay, what's in the article? Mm -hmm. And the other side is um the right side. Those are your responses. Mm -hmm. Okay, responses it could be, it could be uh, this is interesting. I have a question about this. It could also be I'm going to use this point in my introduction, or this would be a good supporting point for my thesis statement. That'll be a, a reminder to you when you come back to it. Oh, let me use that point where, you know, I thought it would be helpful. Oh, okay. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So we talked about choosing good articles, scholarly articles. We talked about reading critically. Then the next step, which I would say is probably the most important step, is beginning with a clear thesis statement. So... A thesis statement is basically your statement about the purpose of your paper, the your claim statement. that you plan to make. What argument are you making? What um, idea are you trying to describe? A very clear, concise thesis statement allows you to narrow your research. So then you know as you start researching, I want to find research that supports this very specific claim. It's also helpful because it gives you a tool for engaging with your sources. So once you know what your thesis statement is, then when you look at your sources, you're going to be looking very intentionally for points that will support your thesis statement, or maybe points that will contradict your thesis statement that you're gonna to wanna to refute. Mm -hmm. Right here is a link to a research guide that we've, we've put together at the Ally Center. And after this, um, presentation, I will email you the link to this research guide as well as all the other things I use. Because this, I think, is something you're going to come back to a lot. Yes. This particular page has a presentation all about thesis statements. I'm not going to go into that now for, for the sake of time. But I recommend looking through that because it will talk you through how to create a clear, concise, debatable thesis statement. Very often your professors will say that in their rubric or in their grading scheme that they're going to be looking for a thesis statement. So you really wanna pay attention to how to craft one that um, will really, because your whole paper is going to hang on it. So you're gonna to wanna to craft one that's really strong. So be looking out for um, that in your um, assignments. And even if the professor doesn't say craft a thesis statement, I always recommend crafting a thesis statement. So mm -hmm. you look at the question the professor is asking, you think about your topic, and then you create an answer to that question in a clear thesis statement. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, no, not about the thesis statement, yeah. but I was wondering how do you go about um, choosing a topic? Like when you aren't really given a topic, um, how do you go about that? Because that's something I'm struggling with. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific assignment that you're thinking about, Christina? That might be helpful if you have an example. Um, so yeah, like in my class, we're about to do um, two assignments. One of them is a flip-flop essay, which yeah. I've never written before, and then an argumentative essay. Yes. Um, so um, I was wondering how, like, because um, my professor, she doesn't, um, she hasn't really given us anything so far that I found in, in the um, modules yet um, about like um, about like what our topic sh um, should be. Um, so I was just wondering how I would go about finding a good one that I could like get enough research on and um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Christina, I'm thinking this is your LAN 101 class, right? Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> and I know this, I've taught, I teach this class. You will. I, we actually have videos with you and with you and them, like informational videos, like that you. Yeah, yeah that's my voice. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I hate this because I feel like, oh, I just go on and on. But yes, so there will be more information about how to choose a topic. But at the end of this time, Christina, if you want to remind me, I can quickly show you a really helpful spot to find ideas for a topic. So okay, that's just remind great. me at the end um, and I'll show. And I think all of you might find that really helpful. We'll look at that. Yay. Yeah, Thank good you. question, of mm -hmm. course. Okay, so choosing good articles and reading them well, crafting a thesis statement. And then, I know we've talked about this from when we were in elementary school on, but the power of a well-organized paragraph will really help you with incorporating research well. So if your paragraphs are organized and you have support from your sources along with your own analysis, you will find that your research really flows smoothly with what you're writing. And I like using this acronym TEST when I think about constructing paragraphs. So the first T in TEST stands for topic sentence. After you've gotten your thesis statement, think about the main points that you want to cover. Each paragraph should be uh, focused on each of those points. So as Christina was talking about an argumentative essay, maybe she's talking about, she's writing a paper about um, why college athletes should be paid. That's a, a very popular topic. If, if her thesis statement is college, college athletes should be paid, then each paragraph is going to be about one of the reasons why college athletes should be paid. Mm -hmm. So if you think about a paragraph, you wanna think about a topic sentence that will start that paragraph. What's the topic of the given paragraph? And then how will you focus the topic with a controlling idea? So the topic sentence will be the topic and the controlling idea. I think it'll help to look at these examples. So here's one, online education, that's the topic, is a better alternative for busy adults. That's the controlling idea. Mm -hmm. This paragraph is going to be all about how online education is good for busy adults. Oops, here's another one. I'm going to move this. Effective leadership requires specific interpersonal skills. So that paragraph is all going to be about effective leadership in general, but specifically the interpersonal skills that are necessary for effective leadership. So really think about when you write a paragraph, what am I going to say in this paragraph? What's my topic? How am I narrowing it down with a specific idea? Let me start my paragraph with that topic sentence. So T for topic sentence, E for evidence. This is now where you support your topic sentence. And here's where you bring in your research. So now that you've chosen your topic sentence, you back that topic sentence up with facts, quotes, data, anecdotes, from your research. That was quick. Facts, yes. quotes. Um, yes. And Kiyama, I'm going to send the link of this yep. to you. So if you don't get it all written down, you'll definitely have this to look at. Okay? Okay. Thank you. No problem. So T, topic sentence. E, evidence. End your paragraph with a summary statement. Wrap it up by reiterating your topic sentence. You'll find that it makes your paragraph just feel much more contained and it reminds your reader what you've been talking about. So your summary statement can be very similar to your topic sentence. And then finally, t the final T in test, transitions. So in your paragraph, use some transitions to connect ideas together. Like for example, furthermore, in addition to transitions within your paragraph, start each paragraph with a transition, which a lot of students already do, and you probably use that in your writing. First, second, third, lastly, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of students remember to start paragraphs with transitions, but they don't always remember to use transitions within the paragraph as well. You'll find that as you do that, it'll make your writing flow more because you'll be connecting ideas for your reader. I really like this link here that's provided by Purdue Owl, because not only does it give you tons of interesting transitions that you can use, it also shows you what transitions you want to use for what kind of idea. So if you want to add ideas on, here are some really nice transitions to use. Um, but if you want to compare two things, 
this, these are good transitions to use. So if you feel like you're always using the same kinds of transitions, first, second, or for example, it may be time to mix it up a bit. So check this link out when you have some time and choose transitions um, and use some variety and use some intention as you choose them. Okay, so that's something that I would recommend you looking at. All right, so T topic sentence, E evidence, S summary statement, and T transitions. That's gonna give you a beautifully constructed paragraph. When you think about your, the paragraph structure with the topic sentence and the summary statement, notice that the topic sentence and the summary statement should be your own words. The topic sentence is the main idea, right? That you wanna write about. And the summary statement is reiterating that main idea. And that's just a really good rule of thumb to remember to start and end your paragraphs with your own ideas rather than someone else's quotes or someone else's ideas. If, if we happen to get um, an idea from one of our sources to write like that, um, it's, like it's inspires our writing. So mm -hmm. like, but we would have to quote that, but should we, like, if we get an idea from somewhere else, would that be wrong to have it as the topic sentence? It wouldn't be wrong, but it would make sense actually to use that as the evidence. So starting the topic sentence with uh, college athletes should be paid because they spend so many more time, so much more time in practice. Mm -hmm. Joan says, and there you would follow your topic sentence with a quote to support your topic sentence. Mm -hmm. The okay. reason is then, Christina, you are leading the way in terms of the information rather than Joan speaking for you. So your professor wants to hear your analysis backed up by the research. So that's why it's better to start with a topic sentence coming from you than supported by whoever you want to quote. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what's the danger is if you have lots of paragraphs starting with quotes and ideas from other people, the paper starts to read like a, a mishmash of other people's words and it doesn't, your voice doesn't come across clearly. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. like to think of paragraphs as sandwiches where you've got your words at the top and at the bottom and inside is other people's stuff. Yeah. So that way your thinking is highlighted. Does okay. that answer your question? So think yeah, about- Yeah, yeah. I, I just get um, worried because they say like when in doubt, like cite everything. So I'm think I like when I'm like researching, I um, if I get like an idea from anywhere, like I make sure to like um, record that. Um, yeah that point. So I'm thinking if one of my points is something that I've researched that it wasn't my own knowledge already, um, but right. maybe it's part of my thesis statement, like maybe it goes along with the with the thesis statement. So it would be part of the paragraph. I was thinking like, if it had to do with the topic sentence, would I, how would I word it to where it's my own words and I'm not plagiarizing, you know? Yeah. I just get worried about that. <laughs> so the topic sentence is going to be like the example I gave you, it's going to be somewhat mm -hmm. general. Okay. College athletes should be paid because they spend so much time in practice. That's a general mm -hmm. idea. But mm -hmm. now let's get specific and talk about who, who talks about this whole idea of lots of hours of practice. That's now where you add Jones's ideas and that's what you would cite. Okay. So general ideas, you don't need to cite as long as you're going to follow it with material that supports the general idea, which you then cite. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So the topic sentence is a little more general, the supporting evidence gets a little more specific and that's what you're going to be citing. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna talk about, we're gonna get a little more specific about how we take that research and put it into our writing. And there are three ways that we can do that. The first way, which is probably the most obvious way is to quote, right? Mm -hmm. So you quote when you want to highlight something that's in worded in a very striking way. When you quote, you wanna make sure that you're using the author's exact words and you're placing it between quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Select a narrow segment to quote. So I think this is really important. You really want to avoid over quoting. So a rule of thumb is you don't want more than 10% of your paper to be quoted. So that comes out to about a sentence or two sentences 
here and there quoted. You don't want to have long block quotes. You don't want to have long paragraphs quoted because then mm -hmm. your paper comes across like it's full of quotes and not your own wording. So you want to save your quoting for those lines that are so powerful or unique that you could not possibly express them in your own words. They, you really want to capture uh, the wording exactly as it is. So very often for scripture, there's that one verse that you really want to use the exact words. That's what you're going to quote. Okay, but remember this rule of thumb, no more than 10% quoted material. Oh, wait a minute. No more than 10%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you're quoting more than two, three, you know, you're, you're quoting three, four, five sentences at a time, I would say that's too much quoting. You want to find that one sentence that's powerful and the rest of it, you're going to want to paraphrase and we're going to get into what paraphrasing is. All right, so I just talked about quoting. Now I want to talk about the ICE method because um, very often when students find a quote they like, they'll just simply put it into their writing. So they're writing what they're thinking and then they find a quote they like and they just put it in and then they move on. But what happens to the reader is it's a little choppy and awkward because first it's your words, then it's someone else's words, and then you move back to your words. And it feels like there wasn't any thought into why that quote is there. It's not smooth, it doesn't flow. And so whenever you use someone else's words, or even whenever you use other people's ideas in your own words, you want to think about this acronym ICE, the ICE method. So how does ICE work? So the first thing you're going to want to do is introduce your quote. I for introduce. State the author's last name if you have to give any background about them, if they're a researcher or a pastor or a teacher, you can use that and use a signal verb. Um, this link gives you a whole bunch of different signal verbs you can use. Um, states, presents, criticizes, claimed. Um, you don't always have to use the word said. There are lots of different kinds of verbs that you can use to introduce someone else's words. Okay, so introduce a quote with a signal verb. Here's an example of, actually this is an APA formatted paper and so we use a past tense signal verb. Timmermans and Booker stated, and then there's a quote from them. So the reader already knows, okay, these are the two researchers who had this to say. So I introduce. Follow with this question. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just reading. I'm sorry. I got it. Right. Sight. Okay, yep. See sight. So always follow your quote with a citation. And this is a link to a guide uh, that talks about citations. We're going to come back to that because I know you guys want to talk about citations in more in more detail, but um, we're going to go right there later and talk specifically about MLA formatting. Okay, so can you, can you go back? I'm sorry. Can you go what? back to the screen before this? Because I have a question. The introduce. Yes. Yes. So where the example at? Um, because I I do this sometime with the with the say the two authors. So yeah. inside of that, I should be putting the year. Um, or is that okay. the page? Yeah. So this is this is an APA example. Okay. So you actually would not put the year until the end here. Okay. I will show you. Uh, I will show you an example of what an, an MLA. Okay. 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 Would look like. Okay. But you, would, you would start with their names like that. Okay. Yeah. Great question. So hold on to that because we will come back to what that what that will look like for you. Okay. Okay. So I introduce C site, and then this is the step I think a lot of writers forget, they put in a quote and then they move on to their next point. E, explain your quote. Tell the reader yeah. why this quote is important. Tie it back to your thesis statement. This shows how much time athletes spend in the gym for which they should be paid, something like that. Tie it back to your argument so the reader understands, oh, this is why she included this quote or, oh, this is why she included this study. It really supports her point of view. It really shows the, uh, the reader that you're being thoughtful about your information and that you're using it uh, in a very strategic way. Explain how this research proves what you're trying to say. Why is it important? 
Okay. You, you said tie it back to, you said explain your quote and tie it back to um, the thesis or what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's nothing wrong with going back to your thesis. Um, and Christina, especially for you with that flip flop and argumentative papers, the thesis yeah. statement, you're going to want to go back to that frequently through your paper to show your reader how clearly you're supporting that thesis statement. Okay. So, um, this link has a lot of examples. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Here are some other ways to introduce quotes that this link has, but there are some beautiful examples for how to explain a quote. Oh, that's nice. In and other I'm words, and then you put it in your own the state and making this the essence of X's argument is that. So you can reiterate the quote or the paraphrase in your own words and you know remind the reader that this argument matches your argument. So mm -hmm. yeah. you can pull these right out and put them into your writing and you'll be amazed at how beautiful it will sound. It will really yeah. sound smooth. Yeah, mm -hmm. very professional. So keep the ICE um, method in mind as you're putting your um, other sources into your writing. Any questions about that? No. No, no. okay. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Time is flying by. So mm -hmm. I give you an example here of how I use that quote with the ICE method. I have the introduction. I have the quote. I have the cite. So I introduction, I've got the C citation. And then here I've restated the quote in my own words. In other words, they believed that Christian colleges generally avoided engagement with societal and cultural issues. Um, it, this may not make much sense because I've taken it out of context, but it just shows my reader that there was a very clear reason why I wanted this quote. It, it reinforces what I've been trying to say. Mm -hmm. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, so we've talked about quoting. Now remember, we don't wanna do a whole lot of quoting. So another thing that mm -hmm. we can use is paraphrase. So yes. paraphrase is when you have a chunk of material you wanna use, you can't quote it all. So you want to write it in your own words without changing the meaning. Um, it's something that supports what you're trying to say. It's, um, uh, in, it in, includes important details that you want, uh, but you don't wanna quote the whole thing. Now, remember when you paraphrase, it doesn't mean taking an article and then just changing a few words and then presenting it as your own, because that's actually a form of plagiarism because you're presenting it as though it's all your own words. So when you paraphrase, uh, to paraphrase effectively, I have this strategy that I like to use. You first read something that you'd like to use, reread it if you need to, so you understand your meaning, the meaning, and then set the text aside. Sorry, that went ahead too far. Mm -hmm. Set the text aside and don't look at it and write your paraphrase in your own words, getting the main <laughs> ideas of the text. Okay. Write paraphrase in your own words. Yeah. And if you're not looking at the article, but writing in your own words, you're much less likely to just sort of almost copy the article because now you're going to have to think of it on your own. So that's on the left side of that double entry journal. That might be a good place to put this paraphrase in your own words. Read. Um, Write paraphrase in your own. Okay. Yeah, without looking too much at the article so that you're not tempted to copy it. Review the paraphrase, make sure that you haven't changed the meaning or um, <laughs> something that's not there, make sure it's accurate. Include an in-text citation. Okay, wait a minute. Even okay. though it's in your own words, it's not your own idea. So mm -hmm. you still need to give credit to the author. And get, just, just like quoting, introduce the material, cite the material, explain the material. Why is this stuff important? What does it prove? How um, is it significant to your thesis statement? So even if you're not quoting, still use the I structure. And oh, remember, you... cite because it's not your own ideas. Go ahead, Christina. Um, I was going to say, so like when we paraphrase, mm -hmm. um, should we always include like, for example, like according to Jones, like blah, 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 or should, or can we word it in like another way, but of course quote in both instances? Um, how would we do that? Like what would be the best way to do that? 
like without do we always have to use their name like oh um or not uh, you don't always have to use their name so okay. let's say um researchers of researchers have found that athletes can spend up to 30 hours a week in the gym mm -hmm. i now that's in my own words i haven't used someone's name but in my citation i'm going to want that person's name and maybe mm -hmm. a page number if i have one so okay. you don't necessarily have to always mention the name of the source Okay. But as long as it, if there is an author's name listed, as long as it shows up in your citation, then you're good to go. Okay. Does that answer oh, your question? Okay, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Jackie. You have a question? Yeah. So when you're paraphrasing, like I'm using my own words, yes. right? Yep. So when I, I finish using my own words, because you're right, you said that's not my idea. I should still in quotation put John Doe and the page number or... Yep. Okay. In parentheses. Okay. Yep. Right. In, in parentheses, parentheses, I mean. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Last name of the author and page number if it exists. And we'll go through those details, but absolutely right, Jackie. Okay. Okay. Because okay. it's Doe's ideas, we've got to give Doe credit at the end of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're probably going to do, no, not probably. You should be doing much more paraphrasing than quoting, right? Because you right. don't want to over quote. Mm -hmm. So that's what your professors are going to be looking for. How yep. is the student? taking what's out there, putting it together in his or her own words, but still citing well. So he, he, you know, you're not plagiarizing. Okay. I'm not gonna click on this, but if you wanna practice how to paraphrase or get some information about that, because it is a little trickier, you can click here on this um, link right there. Okay. All right, so quoting, paraphrasing, and finally summarizing. Wait a minute. So, Writing a, as you know, writing a summary is when you take a lot something long and you boil it down to its main point. So mm -hmm. perhaps you have an article that has a whole lot of stuff and you just want to um, say what the main idea is, because just the main idea is all you meet, need, then that's fine. You would summarize. Mm -hmm. Read an article, highlight its main points, write down what the main point is in your own words and include it in your writing. Again, because that main idea is not yours, you want to include an in-text citation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, a summary is good when you don't need all the details from an article or a book, but you just wanna give some sort of snippet of the main idea. That's when you would just summarize it, but you would still cite. There's a link there uh, to a page that shows you how someone has used quotation, paraphrasing, and summary. It's really helpful so you can see the difference in how they've done it and how they've cited it. So definitely check that out if you want to see different ways that can be done. Okay. Any questions? No. Nope. All right. So now... We've talked all about getting the research into our writing. Oh, now boy. we're going to talk about the biggie, citation. Yes, citations are <laughs> favorite. Now, <laughs> what's <laughs> growing? <Sorry. laughs> That's okay. Now, luckily, all four of you are doing um, MLA formatting for your mm -hmm. courses. You're always going to want to make sure that you check with your professor. Do you want me to use MLA or APA? But I think most of you probably for your courses will use MLA. I want to make sure yeah. that with MLA that you're using MLA 8 because that's yep. the most um, that's up to date. Um, there is an MLA 9, but 9 and 8 are so similar that you should be fine using 8. You want to make sure that you're using it consistently. So that's why whenever you find an article you like, you make sure that you get the citation information. And I'm going to show you uh, after this how to find that information on the library website. Okay, but don't get stuff from an article and then lose the article and not have the author and not have all that information because you're going to need it for citing. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at this guide on citing. Oh, God. All right, so this right here is a really helpful overview of MLA formatting. I'm actually going to skip the beginning because it just talks about what MLA is. You can certainly read that elsewhere. It's important to cite consistently because that shows 
academic integrity, right? Mm -hmm. It shows mm -hmm. that you are doing thorough research. It shows that you're paying attention to detail and mm -hmm. it shows that you're not stealing people's information, but rather you're crediting them uh, with their work. Generally, institution-wide at LBC, we use MLA formatting unless you're doing business or social work or counseling, but for much of the um, undergraduate courses, you're going to be writing in MLA. All right, so the first thing is, and I wonder if, I'm not sure how to get this bigger. Um, when you look at this on your own, you can expand it to the whole screen. Uh, the first thing you're go going to want to do is make sure that your paper is headed according to MLA formatting. And right down here is a template that you can download and you can use that for all your papers because it already has the heading and the page numbers built in. So I recommend downloading in that and then using that whenever you write your papers. But just so you know, for an MLA paper on the left side is your name your instructor's name. Name? You, wait, wait, you're, okay. You're your here. name. Yeah. Your uh -huh. professor's name. Prof name. Okay. Yep. The course code. So like LAN 101. Course code. And then <laughs> the date of the paper. Date of the paper. The date the paper's due. Paper due. Okay. Yep. And then on the upper right hand side is a header with your last name and page number. Oh, wow, I didn't Ooh, know. That. Upper right, yeah. you did tell me that. I remember you told me that. Let me, upper, um, upper I, right. Oh, oh, upper right is the, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you did tell me that. There, now we can see it, right? Yes. Can everyone see that? Oh! So that's what you're going to want the top of your paper to look like. Notice that everything is double-spaced and is in Times New Roman 12 point. Okay, so when you download that template, you're going to get the right font, the right spacing, everything. Don't change it up. Don't change the spacing. Don't change the size. Keep it in Times New Roman. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so with the date, I have been um, just putting like the date that I've completed it on there. Mm -hmm. um, because um, you know how sometimes like half of the week's assignments are due like on a Thursday and the other half's due on yeah. Sunday. So I didn't know that um, we were supposed to put the due date, like what I didn't know that. Even if we're like late and we're turning in an assignment late, we still would put the original due date? I would put the original due date, yes. Okay. Now, I don't think the professor is going to dock you points if you haven't. She, been yeah, she hasn't. <laughs> she hasn't, yeah. Um, but it's just a good habit to get into. Um, okay. And notice how the date is written, it's like international format. So I just realized, like, yeah. I mean, not right now, but like uh, my, my professor corrected me Number in my last month. class um, okay. about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a very specific thing that goes right there. And it should be in parentheses? No, no, no. So it should just okay. be like this. This is just an example. Okay, because that's how I do it the way you got it there. I do do that. Very good, very good. Yeah, you told me that. <laughs> oh yeah, did I? Yeah, Notice I did. also the title. It goes in the center. No mm -hmm. bold, no underline, no quotes, just the title. No bold. No bold, not for MLA. MLA is very uh, sort of simple, minimal. So you don't do a lot, whole lot of stuff. Okay. Um, and then it's only, it's double space between the date and the title, and then mm -hmm. just hit enter one more time and start your paper. So not this big okay. long space or anything. Everything oh, really? So you don't just start right underneath the title? Well, it would be double spaced if you hit enter. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Space. Oh, I get what you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the title is centered and then you would, you know, start your paper two, two lines down. So okay. on the right hand side where you have last name and number one, is that kind of sort of above where my name professor, because I do what you got over here with the professor yeah. and all that, yeah. but mm -hmm. I don't do where it has the last name and um, page. Yeah. So that is your right header. So Microsoft Word kind of puts it up at the top there. Okay. And if you download that template, um, Jackie, you'll be able to type white right in there and okay. it'll just add the pages for you. Okay, okay. It does okay. it in that kind of gray like that. Okay. Yeah. It kind of hides from you and then you then you're like, oops, I it forgot. <laughs> yeah, okay. and you know, the, the, the thing is sometimes Canvas also cuts it off. So if your professor says, 
I didn't, you didn't put a header in. You can, you can tell them, oh, I did put it in. And if they download it, they'll see it. But you're okay. right, Christina, Microsoft will also hide it unless you like click on it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Jack, you'll want that up in the right-hand corner. Okay. Great questions. Okay, so that is the, um, the top of your paper. All right, now let's get into citing. Ugh. Generally, you will cite any information that is not from you. Cite any information? Yeah, that did not come from your own head. Now, whether you quote it or it's in your own words, you cite it like we talked about early, earlier. Mm -hmm. If something uh, is considered common knowledge, generally it can be found in three or more sources, although that's sort of iffy because if it's special, it's in three or more sources, but it's still specialized, it's not necessarily common knowledge. But um, mm -hmm. something that everyone knows, like who the first president of the United States is, or um, when this, I don't know, I can't think of something at, off the top of my head, something that we would definitely consider common knowledge, you don't necessarily need to cite. Okay. If you're not sure, cite it. So sometimes people like to put quotes that are sort of famous, but they haven't found a source for it. I would suggest finding a source for it and, and citing. Um, I heard before that like if we look up a definition of something and we're like including that definition, like we Google a definition, that mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to cite that we got that definition from Google. Is that true? Oh, I cite Are that. you putting that in quotes? Like, are you copying the definition? Well, I haven't done this yet, but I just yeah. thought of this. Um, yeah. Where, um, like, if, like, I don't know if you're, like, looking up a definition of the word and it has some relevance to your paper, like, um, I can't think of anything, but, like, if you're, like, um, this means, you know, like, you know, and if you just didn't know exactly the correct definition of it and yeah. you look it up and then you type it out, would you need to quote that definition? Right. But yeah, would you put, like, think... Webster said such and such right. and such? Okay. Yeah. Um, see, here's the thing. If you're putting, if you're using the exact words of some someone's definition, Christina, you would have to put it in quotes and cite it. Mm -hmm. If you're giving okay. a general definition, like um, professional athletes are generally considered to be those who are paid for what they do. You know, that's not a good example because everyone knows that, but some mm -hmm. um, medicinal marijuana, I know people write a lot about legalizing marijuana. Medicinal marijuana is generally used for uh, chronic pain. That, that's mm -hmm. kind of a definition, not not necessarily word for word from somewhere. And then let's say, okay, like with that example, let's say you mm -hmm. said like it's used for chronic pain. And then you say um, chronic pain is considered. And then you look up the definition of chronic pain on Google and you say yeah. um, chronic pain is considered blah, 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 blah. Would that need to be cited because you just looked it up on Google and like the first thing that pops up is like a definition, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, because it's you want to you want to explain clearly what that term is, mm -hmm. I would cite it because that's not okay. just yeah. oh chronic pain is when it hurts all the time. No, chronic pain is specifically these things. Mm -hmm. So I would actually cite that. Yeah. And how do you cite from Google? <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that because um yeah, and that's I you also want to be careful how much Google you I use. avoid using like yeah. um stuff like that anyways. Yeah. But I was just, um, I've heard that about that before, like how definitions and stuff, or like if you look up when is D-Day or something like that, and you like find definite, and you like find um, the date of things and stuff that you didn't need to cite it, so. Yeah, now something like that, when is D-Day, you wouldn't have to cite that. That's considered like mm -hmm. historical knowledge. Mm -hmm. But definitions specifically, especially if they're, um, you know, they're specific and technical, I would cite that. And I would take that definition from one of the arts. So if you're writing about, about, about marijuana, I would want to find mm -hmm. something from one of those articles that talks about chronic pain rather mm -hmm. than just pulling yeah. a definition from Google. Yeah, that's a better idea. Yeah, yeah. using the sources you have, I think that just makes you more credible. Mm -hmm. yep. I quoted something from is it George Santana, uh, something about um, um, those that don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Yes. So I had to cite that. I couldn't yeah, find yeah. it. But I found it in a book. Yep. Yeah. I had yep. to cite the book and plus That's him. Good. Oh, so, gosh, that was yeah. a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but that's, yeah, that, and, and it's helpful to know even who said it because that kind of gives context. So it's good. It's good that you cited that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice job. All right. So Jackie was asking, okay, what goes in the parentheses? Let's talk about this. So 
how we write the citations in text. Wait a minute, Focus right. on that first. Right, in Gen Yep, in text citations with MLA generally, you want the author's last name and the page number, nothing mm -hmm. else. Wait a minute. Okay, oh, so if there's one author, it would simply be the last name, space, page number. Notice yeah. there's no P or PG or anything like that. Author's last okay. name. Okay. If there are two authors, now Jackie, that example I had earlier, if you right. want to cite two authors, you would write Jones and you would write out the and, Carl and the page number. Okay. It's like that. In oh. parentheses at the, end of the, at the end of whatever sentence or whatever you're using, quoting okay. or paraphrasing. Three or more authors, notice MLA with three or more authors, you use this term that's Latin that means and all at all. So Ooh. let's say Jones, Smith, Doe, and Martin wrote an article. You use whatever author comes first as your, as your author's name in the citation, and mm -hmm. then you simply write at all, notice there's a period there, and- The page number. Okay. Yes. Right. Now, it's really easy, when you're using scholarly sources, you're generally going, you're always gonna have authors. If you start using other sources, and sometimes you might use a website here or there, there may not be an author, right? Mm -hmm. So then what you do is you end up using the title of the source. Because the title is going to, it's generally, because there's no author, it's generally going to be a web page article, you put it in quotation marks. Okay, so I used um, something from this article, so I have the name of the the, the article in quotation marks, and then the page number. So you don't put the year, out, so that's no, gonna be no, no. okay. Year is, so year is all APA stuff. MLA, okay. you don't put the year in in-text citations. Okay, okay. So that's- So um, if you, uh, like I, um, in a paper I wrote um, in my last course, I used like a book and the book was basically like it was edited by but it was not like there was no like specific author listed mm -hmm. um so in that case I used the name of the book um and like page number like you said but um so if it's so if it's edited by somebody you wouldn't use that as the author name you would not no you okay would the name of the book two authors last name yeah, yes we'll get into that in a oh, second sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. that's okay um yeah so the rule of thumb is if you don't have the information you leave it out you don't put something else in so christina you did a you did a good thing not kind of replacing the author's name with the editor's name because emily doesn't want you to do that so okay. let's say you're using something by jones but it's an online source and there's no page number then you would just write jones okay mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you've got two authors with the same last name, then you use first initials. Um, let's say you've got, uh, and I actually have this in the, in the, uh, the sway, you have um, the same author and you're using two sources, two things by that author. Then you put the title in between the author's name and the page number. Multiple works by the same author. Yeah. So Jones wrote Good Life and Happy Times, and I wanted to use both of those. So okay. then I put the title in the citation. Okay. Now, this brings me to something actually, and Christina mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Up here, Effects of Modern Philosophy. That is an article. So it's mm -hmm. in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Book titles are italicized. Okay, good. Okay, here's a rule of, that kind of helps me remember this. Think of quotation marks as little hangers. Hangers hang up little sources. So articles, web pages, uh, a poem, a song, those are all in quotation marks. Italics are big sources, the name of a book, the name of a journal, the name of a website, those are italicized. All right, so think of your short sources in quotation marks, the long source, italics. Okay. Just the title, right? Just the title, okay. yep. Yeah, don't put any, sometimes students put quotes and all in italics, not that. No, just when you're citing a title, you got, you're going to use italics. 
And okay. we would um, shorten the title, you know, if it's too long. Exactly. So effects of modern philosophy. Let's say that title said effects of modern philosophy in the current age in the United States of America. You generally shorten the title to like the first four words. Okay. So I mean, articles you don't um, italicize? Correct. Article okay. titles you do not italicize. Okay. So Jackie, even let's say you're writing in the article, blah, 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 by Lloyd Jones, and then you give the quote. Even there, you're gonna put the article's name in quotation marks. Right, okay. Same okay. thing if you're writing about a book. In his book, Good Life, Martin Jones states, good life would be italicized, okay? So anytime you're using the title of a book or the title of a journal, italicize. Okay. Anytime you're using a, a web page or a journal article, quotation marks. Okay. All right. Bible citations, very specific. Oh, yeah. You'll be doing this a lot. Yep. Okay. <laughs> the first time the you, Bible. you quote or cite the Bible, you put the you write out the version. Wait a minute. Oh. You italicize it. Remember, it's a book, so you italicize it. Mm -hmm. okay. And you put the reference. And notice in MLA, when you're putting an in-text citation with the reference, look right here. You use yeah. a period <laughs> rather than a quote. What? You use a what? Okay. No, notice how Colossians 120 yes. is mm -hmm. a period there, not a colon. That's a specific MLA thing. You also need to abbreviate the name of the book. And there are specific MLA abbreviations. I just Google that and you'll find, okay, how do I abbreviate Matthew according to MLA? And it'll give okay. you the abbreviation to use. That's easy to find. Okay. Okay, so I'm using, I've used the English Standard Version for my quote the first time. Let's say that throughout the rest of the paper, I'm gonna be using the ESV. After that, I don't have to keep putting English Standard Version, English Standard Version. I can just, write the, the scripture reference. I don't have to give the version anymore. Yeah, but if, if we use like a different version, then we would you do that. And then if you okay. go back to the first version, then you have to say it again. Okay. So <laughs> I tell students, uh, just stick to one version if possible. It just makes it easier. But I understand sometimes you want the wording of one and the other, so. Yeah. Drop yeah. version after, okay. After first use, yep. After so Kiyama, if you're using English Standard Version throughout your paper, right. you only have to say it the first time. And then after that, you don't have to say English Standard Version anymore. That's if you use the same Bible. You use the and same that's in text. Oh, in so text. drop version after, because, wait a minute, after first, okay. Because it says after first, um, quote, after first, is that what you're saying, right? After first use, yep. After the first time you use the Bible, you don't have to keep saying the version. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll keep going then. Um, this is a tricky one, indirect quote. Let's say that you're using this book by Jones and Jones quotes this guy named Smith. You really like that quote. How do you use Smith's quote? You have to give us Smith's name. You've got to give credit to Smith. So what you do is you use Smith's name. You say Smith states, you give the quote, and then you do this little thing here, QTD, which means quoted in Jones 54. Oh. Now you told the reader that what you got it? Smith's quote from Jones's oh, book Jones. on page 54. Right, okay. That's all you have to do. You don't have to go hunt down the Smith article and find all the other stuff. You don't have to do any of that. As long as you do this here, you've told the reader where you got the Smith quote from. Right. Wait a minute, indirect quotes, Wait a minute, mm -hmm. that's for when you're doing in citation. In text citation, yeah. So like I said, Jones uses someone else's quote, Smith's quote, and you like that quote. So you just need to make sure you tell us Smith says and give us the quote. And then you let us know that you got it from Jones on page 54, just like this, QTD period in, and then the information. That's called an indirect quote. Okay. Okay. What is the indirect quote anyway? Wait a minute. Um, is that the same as paraphrase? Okay. No, that's okay. I've got this book by Jones. 
Sorry. Jones has this really nice quote by someone named Smith. Jones is quoting Smith. That's an indirect quote. I'm going to use the Smith quote. That's an indirect quote. Does that make sense? Yeah, that you got out of Jones' book. That I got out of Jones' book. Yeah. But you're still giving credit because he used that saying um, Smith stated, but you still got to acknowledge the both of them. Exactly. I got it from Jones. So I'm showing you where I got it from Jones. Mm -hmm. And that's all I need. When I do my work cited, I don't need to find out Smith's title, his year. I don't need to find any of that. I just give the Jones citation and we'll get to work cited. Okay, so the last thing is block quotes, which I don't love. Your professors don't really love because it looks like you're nope. filling the space. Can't stand but them. If you really must use a block quote. If you end up quoting more than four lines of text, you're gonna have to make it a block quote. And how you make a block quote is you indent it for in you. So if you if you write it out and you hit right. tab, mm -hmm. Microsoft will indent it in like that. And mm -hmm. you put the period before the citation. So something I I don't know if it says it later, but whenever you use in-text citations, the period usually goes after the parentheses. With a block quote, the period goes before the parentheses. You also don't oh. use quotation marks because the block quote shows that it's a quote. So you actually don't even use quotation marks. You just put the block quote in. You know what I think they should use the, four, the block quotes for? Anybody that's an undergrad, indirect quotes on up, use anything after that, that's for master's level because it keeps it simple. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> you might have a block quote in a really long paper, that's fine. Yeah, but when you're okay. writing a six, eight, 10 page paper, block quotes are just gonna look like you're being lazy. So yeah, right. stay away from it if you can. Okay. All right, so we talked about, it's great when an article has a page number and, a, and an author, but Remember, um, now these may not be uh, as necessary for you, but if you have scripture or poetry where there are line breaks like the Psalms, mm -hmm. instead of writing it like that, you can use little slashes to show where the line oh, breaks are. Then you, yeah, then you can end up just writing it side by side and it, you don't have to indent it. Whoa. For poetry, you should also give the line numbers. Um, obviously, if it was a piece of a, a verse, you would put the scripture there. Okay. Again, here's long verse quotes, you know, four lines of verse, but again, you don't want to, you want to stay away from that. Line numbers. Name of poet and line numbers. Name of quote. Okay. Name of poet. Okay. Yep. And line numbers. Okay. But what I really wanted to show you was the slash, because even if you're quoting scripture that is like a psalm where it's broken up, those slashes can be a way to show where the line breaks are. Mm -hmm. For the poet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I never knew that. Yeah. Uh, some of you may want to cite a lecture. Ooh. Use the professor's name. Smith, blah, blah, blah. That's all you need in text. When citing a, lec a lecture? And it would be like, um, if we were like in text citing a lecture, would it just be like Smith in parentheses? Okay. Uh, and no, then, uh, no, it's better to put it in a sentence, Christina, like Smith, use the professor's use, name in the sentence as opposed to- Okay. Use, yeah. Presenters, use the presenter's slash professor's name. So yeah. just put yeah. his name. Like, like um, Carver, Carver emphasizes the story of Moses, you know, like you had Professor Carver, you would just put his name there and give his little information, what, whatever you're citing. So say Professor Smith emphasize on da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, and it goes in quotes. Only if it is a quote. If it's not a quote, if it's like, this would be my paraphrase in my own words. Okay. So quotation marks. Yeah. But if it's paraphrase, it still has to be quoted, right? In my, in my, in his own, in my, oh my gosh. Cited, 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 cited. yes. Right. So, yeah. yes, you're right. But for citing a lecture, the name is all you need. Okay. You anything in parentheses because MLA doesn't have a way to account for that. So you just use the professor's name in text. And no parentheses. No parentheses. Okay. And no quotes? Only if you're using their exact words. Exact words, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, if you have a PowerPoint or something where you can hear exactly what they say and get their exact words, then yeah, use quotes. And it goes before what you're going to say and then the period. Correct. Okay. Yeah, Whew. yeah there's a lot here. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are ever going to use YouTube videos or anything like that. But if you do use a video, mm -hmm. put the name of whoever created it in your sentence. Mm -hmm. And then in text, you put the, you know, whatever minutes or whatever you found that particular quote or that particular scene. Yeah. That Believe it or not, I've done this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So uh, oh, that's how you're going to want to do that if you're using a video. Yeah. Okay, you have to put the time where it... Correct. Okay. Same with the podcast. So whatever mm -hmm. time addresses whatever Joe Jones is saying, put that at the end. Oh, the with the wait a minute. Okay, this is like a podcast. Okay, let me... Podcast okay. or video. Podcast, use the person's name, direct, director in text. Okay. Mm -hmm. Director in text. And then the uh, the the range of minutes. Okay, range of minutes, hour. Okay, hours, minutes. Are, okay. All right. Now you're doing this whether it's print or electronic quotes, uh, electronic sources. Um, couple. I've I've actually said a lot of this already. One thing I want to emphasize is. Periods always go after the citation. Mm -hmm. The other thing, like I said, MLA is very minimal, right? So you don't repeat information. So let's say you wanted to put in your I introducing the quote, Jones states, then you don't need to put Jones again in the parentheses. All you need is the, seven, the page number. So if you've got the author's name somewhere, then all you need in the parentheses is the page number. And if there is no page number, then there's nothing else to add. Remember, MLA is minimal, you don't repeat things. So let's say I got this quote from uh, the web and I don't have a, a page number. Then all it would say is Jones states, there's my quote, period, that's it. So you wouldn't like put the name of the, like a, a, a abbreviated name of the article or oh, the book? Because author, right. author is most important with MLA. Okay. Yep. Another thing important with MLA, citations always go at the end of the sentence. So even if the quote is at the beginning of the sentence followed by your own words, the citation always comes at the end. Okay. Citations come at the end. Yes. And you don't wanna do back-to-back -back citations in a sentence. So if you wanna say something and it comes from two references, like figure out a way to put things into two sentences because you mm -hmm. typically do not do back-to-back -back citations in MLA formatting. You will find that in APA, but in MLA generally not. So figure out a way to break it up into two sentences. That's the best um, route to take. All right, so in-text citations um, are the address, for the info that lives on the works cited page. So remember, the last page of your paper is the works cited page. Last page of paper. Mm -hmm. yes. This right here is MLA's template for all works cited entries. You do not have to memorize how to do works cited entries. There are plenty of resources to help you. I just like to show this to students so that they know what they should have in it and see if anything's missing. Okay. So notice that you're going to start with the author, then the title of the source. That's where you got the information from. Then the title of the container. What's the container? That's where the source is found. So if you're using an article as your source, the container would be the journal that that article lives in. If you're using a web page as the source, the website would be the container that that web page lives in. Okay, so that's kind of explained here. Other contributors, uh, Christina, for example, that source you mentioned, that's where we would put the editor's names. Okay. Okay, notice that, um, and let me see if it says this at the bottom. Yeah, 
the commas only come when we're within the container. So it's author period, title period, and then commas for all the information that has to do with the container and its date, and then a period at the end of your citation. Okay. Now, yeah, I always like, I always like double check. I'm like, wait, am I supposed to put a period here or a comma? And I look on the right. Purdue. <laughs> good, good. Again, like I said, don't stress yourself out having to memorize this. It's, I just wanted to kind of give you something to look, look for. Um, and, and I'm gonna show you how the library even does this for you. All right, so I've got some examples here. There's an example of a book where Bruce Ware, so last name first, mm -hmm. comma, first name. There's the title of the book. Notice it's italicized, period. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the source. It's a book, so there's no container. That, that's my source, the book. So all this container, contributors, version, number, all of that I skip. Publisher is Crossway, comma, publication date, period. There's a book prepared by an editor. Here's the author of the book, Bronte, comma, Charlotte. There's the title of the book, Jane Eyre. There's the editor's name, comma, publisher, date of publication. You're going to have, oops, this went ahead of me. You're going to have a lot of these, these journal articles from an online database. Mm -hmm. Again, the library will put that together for you. I just wanna show you really quickly, this location at the end is the URL. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're using a web, web page, see here's an example of this how to make vegetarian chili. The location is going to be the URL. That's gonna be at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we get there though, notice I did the Bible for you. I italicize the Bible because that's the name, right? Mm -hmm. Follow it with the version, publisher, year of publication, right. If you don't have an author, then use the name of the article in quotation marks. That's the article. Here's the container, the website. The container oh. is italicized. Remember the big, big source is italicized. Here's the date and then here's the location. There are a few more here. There's a YouTube video. Here's the lecture. So remember I said, if you, if you use David Fry in your, in your paper, you would say Fry states, blah, 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 blah. Here is how you would put it in your work cited. Name of the professor, name of the lecture, name of the course, date of the lecture, location of the lecture, Lancaster Bible College. And then they ask you to put lecture right there to show that's the type of source it is. That's really the only thing where I've seen this thing handing out the end. So if you ever use a lecture, just check this out because it's a, and a very specific way to cite it. Go ahead, Christina. I was gonna say, so it says lecture and you don't put a period at the end of, of that? No, for some reason, lecture. there's no period there. Okay. Good <laughs> Glad you noticed that. I, I'm not sure why. I, I got it <laughs> from somewhere. So mm -hmm. yeah, notice the period is after Lancaster Bible College. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, don't stress, oh my gosh, this is so much to remember. Remember there are plenty of um, sources that do this for you. I just like to compare it with this template right here that MLA puts together and make sure I've got everything I need. I have a question. What, uh, one exactly. school that I was at, they had, they didn't use um, work study, um, work cited. They mm. told us to use reference. What's, references. What's, the, what's the difference? Yeah, references is, um, I'm not sure for them, but references is generally for APA formatting. So Jackie, all your MLA papers, you're going to want to put work cited at the top. Okay, because when I first started at um, LBC, I was doing right because I came from Faith Theological Seminary, okay. and that's right, and that's what they had me had yeah. us do. So, um, I, I mean, I, I do that now, but I was wondering what was the difference. Yeah, so reference list would be APA. Work cited is MLA. Okay. Okay, and okay. notice, I'm glad you asked. Notice the title is just in the center like this. Yes. Bolded, nothing fancy. Notice that you still do a page number header up at the top of your works cited page. Oh. But 
remember your works cited page does not count as one of the right yeah. pages. So if your professor wants a five page paper, you can't say, included oh, in is page five. Yeah, you have to write five pages and then do your works cited. Right. Okay. But works cited is not bold though, right? Nope, it's not bold. Not the, again, APA references is bold, works cited is not bold. Okay. MLA doesn't do anything with bolding, basically. Yeah. I, I see a lot of um, little mistakes that I, uh, yeah. Okay, and you know, a lot of professors may not mark all those things, but then you might get one who does. So it's really right. good to- Well, I, well, well I, had one, I had one two classes ago and, and, and he that's why he suggested that. I, I mean, it was it's the little things, but he still took the points off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and you know, that's fair because we do want to be consistent with the MLA style. Well, I say he's the professor, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't get mad about Good it, but you. I, yeah. I, I was yeah. disappointed I'm going to say that, but yeah. I understood because I talked to him and he said it wasn't that it was so much, but it was the little things that, um, like that, like I bold yeah. it, you know, right. stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and Jackie, the great thing is that template I showed you, if you download that, all of these things it shows like nothing is bolded and it's everything, you know, right. it, it follows that format so you can use that. Right, because I'm going to print, it's, I, we will be able to print this out though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely print okay. it out. Um, notice that works cited um, entries, they use the hanging indent. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys know how to find that hanging. Yeah. In yeah. I know it's in the paragraph. That's um, right. Options. Paragraph, margin. And it goes like special indent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Again, though, if you print out that, if you take that template and put it on your Word document, you can just type it in your own citations in. Also make sure, and this is a big one, students sometimes forget and then they lose points. Make sure your entries are in alphabetical order. Alphabetical order, order yeah. Okay. So you have to, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, you're good. You said the indentation, every uh, work site that you use, all that has to be indented? The second, and, the second and following lines need to be indented. So the first line is always over like this and then everything else is indented. So it looks really nice and organized when you have- Is that for every work, a piece that you use? <laughs> it's it's kind of like you can just type it out like um normal like normally but then when you um you can like highlight it and go and it'll be really easy you just click the paragraph option you go to special and you do hanging and then just magically poof i love that <laughs> That's nice. it is it's really nice it just shifts it over yeah <laughs> yep kiyama next time we're together if you want me to yes. show you how to do that on your computer i can do that Definitely. Yes, I wow. Oh boy. Okay. In, indent all of your sources. The first, okay. Yep. Okay, so that is, that's actually just a little blurb about um, with, with some, uh, actually, those are pretty good resources at the end that you can look at. Cite this for me, um, Purdue Owl. They should have a book on that. We can buy. <laughs> well, Emily does have a book, but. I, I'm not even sure I'd recommend it because you have to pay money and everything is pretty much oh, okay. online. Yeah. All right. And it changes. So, and just and so, it changes. It's just exactly. so much in there. I got one from the last school and it's just so much. Yeah. 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 I get now, it. Purdue can be your best friend anytime. Purdue, you wow. Exactly. And I've updated <laughs> here. Um, okay. I just wanted to show you guys really quickly um, at the end here. All right. So. If you find something on one of the library databases, there's that button right on the right-hand side that if you hit cite, it will give you the works cited entry. Yes. Maybe you guys know yeah. this all. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure that you choose MLA 8 and then yep. you can copy it right over to your works cited. So that's mm -hmm. one thing mm -hmm. that's really handy. Okay. The other thing yeah. I'd like to show students is you can email the article to yourself and then right over here, make sure that you've chosen MLA 8 and it will eight. email the citation with the article to you. Mm -hmm. okay. That's also a really nice way to get all your sources for a paper. You email them all, you put them in a folder, yeah. you've got your citations, you're good to go. You won't lose them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They're saved for you. So let the library do the work for you. It's generally going to be accurate, so you're gonna you don't have to worry about that. That's why don't don't worry about memorizing these things. It, the key is just to know where to find the tools that can help you. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. We're here to help. Denver, <laughs> we are here to help. You, you really are. <laughs> yes. yes. I, and Krishna, I know I've worked with you as well. You can set up an appointment with one of us and we can meet over Zoom. Um, I know Jackie, you're closer to the Philly uh, campus, but you can always come on campus and meet someone face to face. But um, we're definitely, our job is to help you with this. So please do not hesitate uh, from reaching out if you have questions mm -hmm. or you can shoot me an email if you have a quick writing question. But my issue was what I was finding because I work during the day. So a yeah. lot of, yeah. And so when I saw this, I jumped on it. Yeah. I, I jumped yep. on it. Good. And Jackie, we do have a few mentors with evening hours. Okay. So um, you can email uh, someone in Philly or email me and I can help you figure out how to set up an uh, evening appointment. Okay. Well. Okay. okay. And that would be obviously over Zoom. Okay. Yes. Um, that would be fine. Yeah. But this was good. I, I, I got a lot out of this. I, yes, I, and I know it was a lot. Um, Christina, do you want me to show you real quick how to find that uh, database? Or I know we're late. I can let you, the rest of you go and I can show you Christina separately. Um, yeah, however, but if, if anybody wants to stay, they can, but um, okay. I'd be happy to see that. Okay. And then you're gonna send the rest of the information to the email so we can download it yes. or uh, print, so, okay. Yes, actually, let me stop the recording now.